Hey guys, so I wanted to come on and do a video because I just kind of actually had the energy to do it today. It's just so many days where I'm just like, oh, I do not feel like shooting a video. And it's so ironic because I was like, oh, I'm gonna be able to shoot videos all the time. Like this isn't gonna be a big deal. And now that I'm actually like doing it, it's like, oh, it's a little bit harder than I thought it was gonna be. And there's this guy on YouTube that I watch all the time and I get so upset when he doesn't have a video. And now I'm like, I get it. Like, cause usually he posts like every day, but he talks about how it can be kind of draining to do a video every day. And I was like, no, it's not. Like, it's not that draining. Like, it's not, no, it's not. And now I'm like, I understand what he's talking about. But I'm here, thank God. Like I said, that I kind of have the energy to do it today. And, um, but I did, and also something I want to say, because I think in my last video I had this hoodie on, I was like, they probably think I don't have any clothes, but I promise I have other clothes. I actually just got off of a Zoom and I had like a nice shirt on and a blazer. And like right when my part was over that I had to be, uh, that I had to do, I like put a hoodie on. This was the first one I, I wanted to, I found. So I promise I really do have more clothes. But I did want to get on today and talk about travel nursing because um, I think in my other video, my last video, I said I was gonna talk about school nursing, but I was kind of being led to talk about travel nursing, especially since it's kind of a, a hot and banging thing right now. Um, so I went to nursing school in 2015, and when I went to nursing school, like my one of my uh, motivations of wanting to be a nurse was to be a travel nurse. So I really had a, had a niche to travel in general during that time, and I still do, but I was, um, I really, I was younger then, and I really enjoyed traveling, and so I was like, and I didn't have any children, I didn't have a husband, at the time I don't think I had a boyfriend or anybody that I was seriously involved with. So I was like, you know, travel nursing would be something that would just be right up my alley for this time in my life because it just makes the most sense. So that was like the goal from the beginning was to get that six months to a year of experience and to go travel. Now at the time I had linked up actually with the international travel agency, a nursing agency. And I had told them, I was like, I'm going to nursing school. Um, you know, I really want to travel and they were like, yes, they were like, you know, when you get done with school, give us a call uh, because we will be more than happy to, you know, get you set up. And it was actually uh, based in London, but they uh, put you, you had, you could get assignments all throughout like the UK. And I went online and like all the reviews were pretty good. Um, and there were a lot of the nurses that were saying like on their weekends that they had off, they would go to Paris or go, uh, or if they had like a longer stretch, they might go to Germany or just some, one of the neighboring countries. Because you know, when you get over into Europe, it's so cheap to travel over there that, you know, it just, it was just a no brainer. Now, the money wasn't very good because um, you would think that if you were doing travel nursing, especially in an international country, that it would be, um, the pay would be pretty good. But it was actually, I was actually probably going to be making less than what I made, what I ended up making in the U.S. I think their rate of pay was like, at the time, and this was like 2015, 2016, at the time it was like 18, 19 US dollars because you know they use the pound in the in the UK or London and uh, so it was like 18 19 dollars but they paid for your they pay for your um, living accommodations so that kind of would balance it out so ended up graduating from nursing school and I actually contacted them it might have been a little bit before I graduated and y'all they went out of business they went out of business. I think they were doing something illegal. Something happened with them, but they ended up going out of business and they um, and they were like, and I can't even remember if I ended up getting a hold of somebody or if I had to end up reading it online. But anyway, up until then, I was like talking to somebody and, and then they just went out of business. And I was so discouraged, y'all, because I was really looking forward to that. I was really looking forward to being able to work overseas and do some uh, travel overseas. 
And so when that kind of fell through, I looked into nursing in Saudi Arabia. Now that is a little different because I think with the nursing that, that I was gonna try to do in the, in the UK, you didn't have to commit uh, for a long period of time. You only had to do like a three or a six month commitment. It really wasn't that long. But the Saudi Arabia traveling, you had to commit to a year and they were kind of the same. Like they paid for all your, um, they, they provided your housing. They, um, they gave you a stipend, I believe. And I mean, you're pretty much living, I think the only thing you probably had to pay for was, was groceries and your salary was like, and I think it depended on if you had a bachelor's degree at the time. If you had a bachelor's, I think you can make close to 60,000. And if you didn't have a bachelor's, it might've been close to 50,000, but this is the catch y'all. It was all tax free, no taxes. So that's why a lot of people go to Saudi Arabia because it's no taxes. So I can't remember what ended up happening. Oh, I know what ended up happening. So you had to have like a year or something, two or big, two years or something of experience. So when I got to my amount of time to get my experience, when I got like the, however much time it was that experience that I had to get in order to work there, when it was time, they changed the rules. And so I don't have a bachelor's degree, I have an associate's degree. And so I think they changed it to where if you were an associate's degree holder, you had to have four years of work experience before you could go over and work um, and work in Saudi Arabia. So I was like, what in the world? Like every time I get ready to do international travel, it literally falls through like every time. And so I called them and I, cause I think it was Helen Ziegler. They're like the, the big agency in, um, in, in, uh, in they're, they're based out of Canada, but they, they do the, the assignments in Saudi Arabia. So I called them and I was like, I finally got my work. Like, is this correct? Like I got on your website, I was getting ready to apply. Now I can't apply. And they were like, yeah, um, something, I can't even remember what they said. They were like, our things have changed and it was to accommodate, and I don't wanna lie, but I wanna say that it was something with the Filipino nurses. It was, it was something, it was something bogus. And I was like, well, maybe God, I'm not meant to do international travel. So then that's when I started pursuing um, local travel. So I, worked in med surge for almost a year and then i ended up going into the ccu now when i got into the ccu i was um i had only had a year of experience in nursing and the icu or the ccu was really a, a totally different environment um the patients were harder um the people were the nurses were different it just really was, and, and I can see for so many, especially new grads, how it can be such an intimidating uh, experience. I did not feel comfortable going into traveling um, a year in with just a year of experience. So I did not do travel nursing until I had two years of ICU experience. And for me, that's what I felt comfortable with because I knew that once I got from, and from what I read, from the YouTube videos I watched, from what people told me, I knew that I needed to go into a unit in another state, in a whole new hospital. I knew that I needed to go in and and basically know how to do my job and not have to really ask for assistance in, in terms of, well, what, what med is this? Or why am I giving this? Or, you know, whatever, whatever. So two years is kind of that threshold where I felt comfortable with it. And honestly, I, I really, if I'm honest, I really didn't even feel comfortable at two years. What ended up happening was I got burnt out with the, with the ICU, with CCU, with probably just bedside nursing in general. And I found another, I probably told this story in another video, but I found another job as a, um, as a doctor's nurse which I was gonna be rounded in the, in the hospital and I was gonna be working with him in the clinic. But that job ended up kind of falling through to make a long story short. So that was my way out of the CCU. And so when that job fell through, I had to stay in the CCU. And y'all, I was just so unhappy. Um, I was super unhappy. And so I kind of felt like travel nursing would be my way out and that it would kind of help rejuvenate me 
it would just be a, a new a new slate. And my situation really hadn't changed. I was still single. I still didn't have any kids. I was not in a serious relationship. And so, you know, I just was like, well, the job is falling through. I'm not really happy here anymore. I've got two years of experience. I'm pretty comfortable now in my in in working here. So I was like, if I'm gonna do it, I need to do it now. And so that was probably about October. I started 20, 20, 2019 that I started looking around with different agencies. Um, I had probably, and you know what, and that's another thing, like when you're getting started with the process, I wouldn't sign up to work with too many agencies because they can really wear you down. Like they, and especially, and I can only imagine how it is now, like it's probably even worse now, but because they will, once you sign up to get information and to that you're and show that you're interested in an assignment, they're going to wear you down. They're going to call you. They're going to text you. They're going to email you. I mean, I still get calls. I still get calls and emails to this day. So you can only imagine when I was really interested with how they were. So um, for a couple months, I worked with a, with, with a few different, well, I signed up for several different agencies and then I narrowed them down to two it was either two or three I narrowed them down to. I ended up going with Aya, A-Y-A. They were the ones that I ended up uh, going with. And I'm not gonna lie, I was pretty pleased with Aya. Um, I, I had a pretty good recruiter, Allie, and she she was really good. So I, I ended up really liking them. And honestly, if I was still traveling, I'd probably travel with Aya. So we um so that was probably about october i started probably november i got serious and got like with one recruiter and she was finding assignments for me so we ended up so i ended up um taking the job in los angeles california at a hospital in compton and it was martin luther king jr community hospital and so but the lead up to that i I did turn some things down and that's something else that I would say. So I, okay, so I would not take your first offer when it comes to anything, when it comes to assignment, when it comes to money, like I would not take the first, I would not take your first offer. And that's just kind of a rule of life. Never take your first offer. And so I got some offers from another ICU it, and then it was a, a like a step down unit that she tried to get me in. And that's why I think it's really important to, this is rule number one, rule number two, don't take, rule number one is don't take your first offer, but rule number two is speak with the, speak with the supervisor in the unit that they're trying to put you in. So like I said, I, uh, I, I asked, I, I got offered a job in a progressive care unit and I was like, uh, I really don't want to do a step down, a progressive care. I mean, I've been working with two patients for two years now. I don't really know if I want to go to three or four, but I was like, but I know I need to be open and it really may not be that bad. So instead of just being like, okay, well, I'll take it. I was like, no, I was like, I need the number of the recruiter. I need you to give me the number. I mean, not the number of the recruiter, the number of the, um, I need the number of the, the supervisor so that I can talk to her. And so before I got on the call, like I had all these questions that I wanted to ask her, that I wanted to talk to her about. And she answered them all truthfully, I will say. And so by the end of the call, I knew when we hung up, I was like, this isn't the right fit. And I think I had a couple other ones like that, that I just talked to them and I was like, nope, this isn't the right fit. But when I got the one in California, when I talked to the, the supervisor there, like I just had, I just had a good vibe. Like it just seemed right. And then even, and then it's just like God put everything in place. like. I didn't have to buy any scrubs because the scrubs that I wore in my old job, they were this they were the scrubs that I had. Um, they were the scrubs that they required. It was navy blue and I wore navy blue at the hospital I worked at. So it was like that fell in place. And um somebody's calling me and that threw me off. And so uh that that fell in place. And then 
I ended up having an aunt and I had kind of forgotten about her, which is so bad. She's really my cousin, but I call her my aunt. But I ended up having a cousin that lived in West Covina, which is only like 26 miles away from, from LA. So my mom was like, you know what? Honestly, you could probably live with San, that's her name, Sandra. You can live with San and you won't even have to look for you won't even have to look for um, for a place to live, which y'all, my mom was totally against me going travel nursing. She was, and that's how, that's how, and this is how I knew too that this was like God ordained and how this was meant to be um, when everything kind of just started falling in place in California. So that really put her mind at ease that I'd be living with a relative and that I wouldn't just be living by myself or with a stranger. Because sometimes the agency will pair you up with somebody to live with, which is the best route to go if you're trying to save money. So, and then it was just kind of other things that just were falling in place and that were really working out. So I was like, you know what? This is the best fit for me. So the process after that was, they. so I think I had to do like a, I, I didn't even do like a interview with the supervisor. I ended up doing a phone something or oh, a voice something. Like they posted the questions and then I had to answer it auto, like on voice message or something. And so I guess they went back and they listened to it. And then I had to fill out a bunch of paperwork, bunch of um, like a skills checkoff list. Like it's a lot of paperwork that goes into it. And then of course you've got to get your payroll stuff set up. Um, you've got to, it's just, it's just a lot of paperwork and, and just kind of the procedural stuff that you do when you get a job. So ended up getting getting it getting the position and I got the position in November. I think it was probably mid-November or it might have been early November and my assignment started December 9th. So I didn't have a lot of time. I had to I had to hurry and pretty much give them my two week notice because my assignment like started really soon. But I will say my supervisor at my job at my job was super uh um, understanding about it and didn't give me any flag didn't give me a hard time at all like it was just like wish me the best and even kind of did some things for me uh, to help me out and and just super supportive so shout out to you Austin because you could have you could have definitely blocked that or or been been discouraging about it but he was super supportive about it so um so I think I left that first week of December. No, I got there December 9th, I think. And then my assignment started December 16th. And I will say, it was interesting. My, my travel nurse experiencing was interesting. So, and it was a lot of travelers. Like when I got to the hospital, it was a lot of travelers that were all starting at the same time. And we were all from Aya, pretty much. Um, majority of us were from Aya. So we had i want to say the first week was just orientation it was just straight orientation uh just going through the procedures of the hospital um uh, getting your payroll and things set up and then of course if you're a nurse you know all the um online modules and things that you have to do so got that set up and then the next week we went straight into it so, oh, and then you figured you did your charting because um, they had a, of course, you're going to always have to go over your different charting methods and what's required of you and all this, all this. So that was the first week, the week of the December 16, 2019. And so the next week we started actually working on our units. So I was in the ICU, which it was a really, actually pretty small ICU. It was a pretty small community hospital. It was 20 ICU beds and they had like a north and a south but the north side or whatever side was like the more critically ill patients and the south side was um, was the side where they weren't as sick, where they were either kind of longer term care patients or they were getting ready to uh, expire or getting ready to go to the, to, uh, the floor. So I, I, they usually always put me on the on the side where the critically ill patients were, which I liked because that's what I'm used to taking care of. 
And, um, and so the first week that I was actually on the unit, it was, they actually gave me three days of orientation, which I was really surprised about because a lot of hospitals, they'll just give you a day of working with somebody else and then they'll send you on your way, especially a hospital, uh, the hospitals now. But I had three days of orientation and I, honestly, y'all, I really needed it because this was a whole new charting system. And honestly, when you're going into a new hospital, the culture is so different. Um, you know, you've got to know, you've got to learn where things are. You've got to learn. I mean, it's just, you just don't really understand it until you're in it. But it's just so much that goes into being a new nurse in a new hospital that does things totally different than what you've been doing it. And then I was in a new state, but I, I, I don't think I really comprehended that, that I've been doing the same thing the same way for three years and now I'm jumping into a totally different thing. So that can kind of be a culture shock, but I was able to adjust. I had a pretty good preceptor. She was, she, we ended up becoming friends, a uh, really good friend. Shout out to Michelle if she ever watches my video, but she was hard on me those first three days, but sometimes that's what you need. You need somebody that's gonna be hard on you and not baby you. And so she, um, she worked with me for three shifts and then after that I was on my own. Now I will say the hardest thing about travel nursing for me was the charting. I um, had been using Epic charting for years. And honestly, even when I um, had talked to my recruiter, I was like, listen, Allie, I was like, I only want a hospital that has, um, that has Epic. And so she tried, she, she tried to get me to a hospital that had Epic, but then she was like, but then she just basically had a one-on-one -on -one talk with me and was just like, listen, you're going to have to just stretch yourself out. You're going to have to. <laughs> she was like, you go basically now Allie was a Caucasian, so she did not talk to me necessarily the way I'm talking. But basically she was saying, listen, now you're going to have to just monitor and adjust because it's not going to be do always doable to get the same charting system and a hospital that you like. So so grateful thankfully i was open to that and um and i did accept the assignment at in los angeles but that was the hardest part it was the charting but i eventually did get it and and you will get it you will get everything and i stayed there for three months and i'm not gonna lie i, I actually really enjoyed that hospital it was a really good experience being in california they protect their nurses so um you you have to get a lunch break. You get a 30 minute lunch break. This is law. This is federal law, not federal law, state law. You get a 30 minute break and then you get two 15 minute, two 15 minute breaks. And you have to take your breaks. You have to take your lunch break. And if you don't take your breaks, then you have to sign off on something saying that you refused your break because that's just how seriously they take it. Now, where I'm from, Arkansas, I didn't get a lunch break. If I happen to eat, if I happen to eat, then I ate. But most days I did not eat. I did not eat. I did not get a break. I might have gotten enough water in. I might have gotten to use the bathroom. You know, I might, I might, I might. But in California, they took the way that they treated their their employees seriously and they got breaks. We also had a charge nurse that did not usually have patients unless we were just super short staffed was like the only way that the charge nurse would take patients. But usually the charge nurse did not take patients. And so that was someone to help you. Um, because you know, when, and then we had a float nurse because I mean, if you, if you're on a critically critical, uh, an intensive care unit, critical unit, you're gonna need help. Like you're gonna have patients that are crashing and the doctor is giving you a million orders and you've got to, you, you've got to have, or even if somebody codes or something, you know, you've got to have help. Now, when, when they code, that's when everybody runs in there, but up to them coding, you know, you need extra hands on deck. And even if you've got to intubate, I mean, it's so much. So having those extra hands, it really made a difference. So that's, that's what I loved about California nursing or the laws that they had in, in, in place. And then just even that hospital, just the culture of just helping. Because a lot of times as a travel nurse, you can be the 
the target because you're making all this money or they think you are making all this money and um you know they feel like <laughs> if you making all this money then you can take the harder patients you don't need any help you know you're good what you know you 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 signed up for this you're the one that left your place of employment to come to come be here so you're on your own but actually it was a very um it was a it was a very i don't know it just was it was just a, almost like a family environment we took care of each other uh everybody was pretty cordial with each other friendly welcoming helpful and even just the doctor culture was different. So where I'm from, Arkansas, our doctors work all the time. Like they usually do five on, they usually work Monday through Friday, pretty much morning, noon, and night. Because even when they do go home, they are on call. Like if that's their patient and their patient codes or their patient is dying or crashing in the middle of the night, like we have to call and wake them up. And then if it's their time for the weekend, if, it's, if they have weekend call, then they not only take their patients, they have to take their their whole practice's patients. So they may not get a break for for they may go 14 days straight. So a lot of so who if you're working morning, noon and night, 14 days straight, you're not very pleasant to be around. You're you're a crappy person to be around. And so um I was used to getting cussed out a lot. Well, not cussed out a lot, but you know, just, you know, just, just the doctors not always being the most pleasant because they were, and then on top of that, they had patients in clinic they ha that they had to see. So super stressed, under a lot of pressure, seeing a lot of people, not getting a lot of sleep. And so, but in California, these doctors actually work 12 hour shifts like us. So there was a morning shift doctor and then there was a night shift doctor. So when the doctor went home, like they went home, they, doc, when the doctor went home, they went home. They didn't have to worry about somebody waking them up in the morning, uh, wake them up at night, you know, just being bothered with stuff. They actually went home. So I feel like that translated into a happier doctor, a nicer doctor. Um, so that was, that was nice and that was different. Uh, what else do I want to say about that? But overall, I had a really good good travel experience. But, and my assignment was 13 weeks. My assignment was 13 weeks. And I'm going to do a separate video about pay because we're already at 27 minutes. And so, and, and I feel like travel nursing pay needs a whole video to itself. But I would definitely say if you're thinking about it, if you're, if you're just thinking about it and you have an itch to do it, I would just go ahead and do it, honestly. Because... You just will never know until you try. And there are some staff, there are some nurses that will never go back staff, that they just want to travel and they that they will just travel because they will, they like doing travel nursing. And so I, um, I, my contract was 13 weeks or three months. And so I did it from December until March. I got out right when the pandemic started, like right when the pandemic started, I got out. And I probably would have um, taken another, well, you know what? I don't know because I don't know if I would have taken another travel assignment. And this is the reason why I, I did travel nursing because I felt like now was the time I was young, I was single, didn't have any children. So it was easy for me to pick up and move. But at the same time, I thought that I was burnt out at my hospital and with ICU nursing. And I thought that just having a change of environment, having a change of uh, scenery, environment, scenery, same thing. But just having that change would reignite me and get me going and, and make me love it again. But it didn't. It didn't. I just was still burnt out. And I just realized that bedside nursing is bedside nursing wherever you go. <laughs> like the working conditions were better because I got a break. And I was able to, um, you know, and I had a set, I, you know what, God really blessed me because I even had a set schedule. You know, when I worked in my old hospital, like I would have to work, I mean, I would work holidays, I would work, I mean, it just was a crazy schedule. But at this, this place, like I was able to set my schedule. I was, um, what was that, Monday? I was Friday, Saturday, Monday. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Yeah, because I had three days off every week in a row. So I was Monday, 
third I was Monday Friday Saturday so I worked every weekend every Saturday but I was fine with that because I wanted to have every Sunday off so I could go to church and they said well if you want every Sunday off you have to because uh, that's what you're there for you're there to really fill in a need and uh and so they were like well if you want every sunday off you have to work every saturday so i was like okay that's fine whatever i will do whatever so that i can go to church and so uh god bless me on that too because i was able to have uh wednesdays off because we had bible class on wednesdays and then tuesdays we had some a little bible class in the morning so i was able to do all the church stuff so um it was it, it was definitely um a, a better experience but like I said, it was still at the end of the day, bedside nursing. So if you're burnt out with bedside nursing, it might be nice to get a change of scenery, but at the end of the day, it is what it is. So I did though, I made a lot of money. Um, I made a lot of money. I made the most money I've probably ever made in 13 weeks in my entire life. And that's, the, that's what really keeps you going is, is, the, is the money. And, but it was hard, California, even though I loved my hospital, like just living in California and and living in Los Angeles was hard because when I was doing like my research here in, in Arkansas and I was looking up like how far it would be to get to work from, to get to work from where my aunt lived from West Covina to Los Angeles. So when I put it in my GPS, it was only like 26 minutes. I mean, 26 miles. It was only 26 miles. So not that far at all because 26 miles in Arkansas I mean, that's less than 30 minutes to get to your destination. But 26 miles in Arkansas is not the same as 26 miles in California. And if you have been to California, if you have lived in California, if you live in California, you know what I'm talking about. It would take me, it would take me an hour, really over an hour to get to work. And that really, it only really only took me an hour because I, because I had to leave the house at, before six so i probably i tried i think i tried to leave the house because i would have to wake up at 4 30 to try to be at the house by 5 30 to be at work at seven and i was only 26 miles away i was y'all i was only 26 miles away only 26 miles away and i had to leave an hour and a half early but that was just that was just california traffic and then it probably take me about an hour maybe a little less because I would get off at seven. And so by the time I got to my car, it was like 7.30. So by that time, it's not a lot of traffic, everybody's home. So it would it would take me a little bit less than an hour to get home. But can you just imagine like working back to back, like getting up every morning and having to get up at 4.30 to get to work, not getting home until 8.39. And then you still gotta eat. So by the time you get in bed, it's 10 and you're exhausted but you got to wake up and do it all over again then child you know they'd be wanting you to work extra I, no i'm not working any extra i, I no <laughs> and really with the amount of money you're in and i guess it too just depends on your goals because with the amount of money you're making i mean i was making probably i was making two thousand a week before tax this is before taxes but i was probably taking home like 18 a week but that wasn't including holidays. So holidays, we'd make 80 an hour. See, that's what I'm saying. Like I need to do another video so I can break it down because the money was right. The money was right. The money was great. And honestly, now it's probably even better because it's COVID, people are quitting. Like, But I will say the working conditions are probably even worse. Probably even in California, it's worse because, and they have all these laws because I mean, they, they need to take care of the patient. So you just may not be able to have the same luxuries that you did when there wasn't a pandemic going on. So ultimately, I enjoy travel nursing. I enjoy, I'm glad I did it. And I would say, if you are thinking about doing it, just do it. Honestly, just do it. Just do it. And you may end up falling in love with it and just absolutely loving it. It does give you financial freedom. It does make you more versatile. Um, because you're going to, I mean, and you're going to be so resilient because you've been, you know, I feel like if you can go across the country and conform to the things that they're doing and follow their rules and get through orientation, especially if it's a new charting system and all that, if you can get through that, I mean, you can get through anything. 
So I and I and I you know what I need to do another video on just watching yourself while you're travel nursing because even though I was in a environment where I felt like it was family oriented and where the people were nice to me for the most part, you know, of course you're gonna always have you you gonna always have a hater. You gonna always have a hater child. Always. Um, even though the for the most part, they were nice and loving and kind, and even the doctors were nicer. Um, you still got to watch yourself. You still have to watch yourself, and you and and to me, that's anywhere because even even kind of at my old job, they would do stuff, but not not but but it's just a different. You got you still gotta you still gotta watch yourself um, when you're in a new territory. You know, and, and I will say this and then I'm going to have to end this video because it's just gone on way too long. But I had a patient that coded. And I know that, I know that my TV is so loud. I really hope y'all can hear me. Um, I had a patient that coded. And of course, everybody gets in there, helps me. And we ended up getting him back. And so when we got him back, we had to start him on a bunch of drips to keep his blood pressure up. Mm -hmm. So I think we started on like three drips, but I was able to taper them down to two. And so I had two drips going at the same time. So I think it was norepinephrine and it was something else, maybe like a vasopressin or something. I can't remember. So I specifically, when I went in there, now mind you, this man just coded, but I did have another patient that I had to check on because I had been in there for like two hours. So, um... I had him on two drips and I know the settings that I had on there. I know the settings that I had on there. And he didn't have an art line at the time. So I couldn't get it. I didn't have a continuous blood pressure on him. I just had like a every five minutes for the cuff. So I stepped away to do something. Probably see my other patient. And I was gone for a minute. And when I came back, when I, when I left, his blood pressure was fine. He was finally stable because I wouldn't have left him if he wasn't stable. So then when I left and came back, his blood pressure had plummeted. And I was like, okay, what in the world? Like, I do not feel like coding this man again. <laughs> I do not feel like coding this man again. Like, what's going on? So I looked at my drips. Y'all, somebody changed my drips. Somebody changed my drips. And then they tried to make me feel like I was crazy because I told, and I, because the girl that was my preceptor, she was um she was there and she was the float i think that day and just kind of helping me and i was like girl i was like michelle somebody changed my drips she was like are you sure i was like yes i was, no 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 it was the charge nurse i told it was a charge nurse nurse i told i told the charge nurse i said somebody changed my janine her name was janine i said somebody changed my drips i was like my drips were not on this she was like, are you sure? I was like, yes. I was like, somebody changed my drip. Somebody came in here and changed these. And so, but she tried to make me feel like I was crazy. But I just knew deep down that I did not change my drips. So then I told my preceptor who, who preceded me the first three days, who had kind of, who had ended up becoming my friend. Um, I was like, girl, I was like, I know for sure. I was like, and I told her what I just told y'all. She was like, listen, she was like, I told you, you got to watch yourself. And, and she did. She told me, she was like, you need to, you need to watch yourself. You, cause, cause people around here, they, they will do things. And so I am warning you, like she warned me, you got to watch yourself. You need to triple, especially if you're in a critical care unit, you need to triple check your, uh, where the doors are open, where anybody can walk in and punch something. And like I said, it was a million people in that room and I had to leave and I went in another room. So who knows who did it? Only, only God and them know who, who did that to my drip. And they, and they don't, excuse me, and they don't care about the patients because that man could have died. But to get at me or, you know, whatever, they, they did it. So just watch yourself. Always, you know, just make sure that you're that you're doing what you're supposed to do so that, you know, so that if something does come up, then they can't you can just you can be on your grind and make sure that you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. So I'm going to end here because like I said, we're at almost 40 minutes now, but I thank you all for watching. And if you all have any questions, specific questions other than travel pay, um, then just let me know because I'm going to do a separate video about pay. 
and um but yeah if y'all have any more questions just let me know and i will address them in a separate video because i'll be running out of stuff like i i, I ran out of stuff to talk about i don't really know what interests people so i don't want to bore y'all um so just let me know what y'all like to talk about what y'all want to know about and i will make a video about it okay talk to y'all later bye